Welcome to The Young Merchant, everyone. Um, we're creating enticing content for uh, the next generation of entrepreneurs and go-getters. Um, we've interviewed a lot of great people from different industries, but today I'm really excited because today we're interviewing Tom Flies. Um, he's a two-time award-winning podcaster. Currently, he has um, a new series out right now called Tapped In, which I'm really interested to talk about. Um, and he seems like he has a big passion for teaching others how to podcast as well and create successful podcasts. So, um, I'm super excited. Thank you for having you on, Tom. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, give me a chance to come sit down and, and talk to you, bro. Anytime. Absolutely. You seem like a busy man. You seem like you're doing a lot. Um, I know you got big numbers on social media. You connected with a lot of great people. Um, it, it just seems like you have uh, energy right now where people want to talk to you and you know how to find great people. Um, and it seems like you have a passion for sharing with others as well. So um, my first question for you, uh, when did you know you wanted to get in the podcasting business? Um, well, I kind of knew I, I, to say early on, but not really early. I was like 20. Um, okay. But um, early on in, in the podcasting space, um, I felt like because I still around that time, I still found myself kind of explaining to people what that was. And even still, I remember rappers and stuff used to make jokes online about what is like what is podcast or what is that? And it's a little, you know, like not not, not really anything significant. Um, but I used to I used to like I always was fond of like just sports, pop culture, all of that, the sorts or whatever. Um, and it was like early, right when Joe Button started his podcast in like February 2015. I remember vividly he started his show. Um and it was one. It was the first podcast I started really listening to. Um, I used to listen to, and I, I used to work overnight at Target, um, like overnight shift from like ten to like six thirty. So I'm in the store, locked in there by myself. Like I mean, obviously my coworkers and stuff in there, but everybody's like spread out apart, just working on their own thing. So it was real quiet. So that's typically where I would listen to most of my shows and um, run through all the episodes. So I start listening to Joe Budden's show, then I became fond of uh, Tax Stone. Um, who had a podcast, who's uh, incarcerated right now, but text on too. Um, then Charlemagne, uh, Angela Yee's Lip Service, just different platforms from different people getting different insight. Like, um, and I would take and feed from each of those podcasts and it kind of helped mold me into, you know, what I wanted to do with my own brand. Um, so I credit them all the time with kind of helping me um, just kind of find my way. And that's when I kind of knew, like, I'm like, I think I could be able to do this. Like, it's, I felt like um, the radio broadcasting business, I guess, was kind of like a gate kept in a sense, like, where it's like, you got to do certain things to kind of get here, or it's like, who you know, um, to kind of find your way to break yourself in, or if you went to school or whatever, and me, I didn't go to school, I didn't go to college for anything. Uh, so I'm like, podcasting is a space to where it's, the, it's like, literally, like, you can choose what you want to do, like, you can you can go ahead and record yourself and upload it yourself and feed it to the same people that's listening to the radio. And around the time, I kind of felt like the radio wave was kind of the traditional radio wave was kind of just dying down um, at the time that I knew podcast was podcast was going to become like the new press run um, around that time. So I'm like, I'm, I want to get a jump on this early. Um, so I sat down. I was working uh, at Target. I had a, two co-workers there. My guy uh, who I started my first podcast with. His name is Boosie. And then he introduced me to his friend, uh, who was, I think his name is Gunna. We started a podcast and we did a podcast for about five years. Five years, we had some success with it. Um, met a lot of dope people, a lot of connections, did a lot of stuff, broke down some barriers as far as in the city, Philadelphia. Um, and that was that was literally it back like in 2015. I realized like, you know, I want to I want to do something and create a space to where as though the people that can't traditionally find themselves into like the broadcasting business has a way in through like this podcast. That's great. I mean, I this ain't a podcast. This is mainly YouTube and the mm -hmm. blog, mostly most of the articles. But I, I've noticed the podcast. I don't, I guess I would consider myself one of those original haters. But you just didn't know what it was, like you know. And yeah. You you know you grow up all, you know in the car listening to the radio, um, and then all of a sudden you. Can, on you know your iPhone whatever that you can just listen to stuff. That's the crazy thing, like you said, you could be at work and you know you don't need a car or nothing. As long as you got internet, um, or you know if you at the house, you can watch it later. You can hear the same episode over and over again if you really you know getting something out of it. Um, right. So I've always seen that like just like the beauty of it and stuff. 
for the people that don't understand, because I know for you, your main thing is you're teaching people how to create successful one. And that's the word that I keep, I, I focus on is successful. In the podcasting business, what is considered successful? Um, I think no one person can measure success for you. So mm-hmm. what I define as successful could be something could mean something different to somebody else. Mm-hmm. So I can set out to want to have a hundred downloads on an episode, or I want to have a hundred people repost my podcast. Like that was my goal when I started. I've reached that goal. This is I, I've reached some type of success with this, right? Mm-hmm. So I what I one thing I try to preach to people is you know it's easy to kind of look at the bigger shows and who's doing this on a certain level, and you want to mirror that or you want to reach that type goal. But I always tell people to be realistic with it. Like, don't go from, don't go from zero to a hundred, like go from zero to one and then from one to two and two to three and so on and so on. Because like I said, a lot of people just try to skip steps or think that they're going to, they're going to be able to find a way to get to this place so easily, or it's going to come so quick. And I'm like, everything is a process. Like it's, it's a process and everything. And you got to make sure you want to go through the process throughout the whole thing. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs in it. Uh, and I preach being disciplined and consistent more than anything. Um, because those are the two things. And I used to hate hearing that because it was so cliche to hear from people like stay consistent, stay, uh, but it's, it, it's like, in all actuality is like fact, like you really have to main, maintain consistency and, and, and stay disciplined throughout it. Um, but success is, like I said, I can't measure success for, for somebody. Like, and I, and I try to just preach people to just be realistic with it. Like, be realistic, set a goal. Um, and it don't got to be, I want to make a million dollars through this. Like, be realistic. Like, want to make a hundred dollars through it. Then how can you make from turn that hundred to 200 or 500, like, whatever. Like, so I feel like once you set a realistic goal in front of you, um, then, like I said, and it'll, it'll make the process easy. You feel like you're growing with it. Like, it makes it, it's easier, I want to say, to kind of just grasp. Like, if, if you just kind of limit what you want to, what you want to call as, like, this is successful because I, they did so I was like, nah, you successful if you if you uploaded a podcast or published or one person listened to it. Like, cause I'm pretty sure at the time when you sitting around thinking about it, it was it's, everything starts as an idea and it sounds crazy to people. Like I couldn't imagine having six thousand people listening to an episode or, or ten thousand people listening to it. And then once you get there, it's kind of like, yeah, I've I've done it. Like I I've done it. So um success to me is like I said, it's it's all personable like it's all what you set for yourself like I can't tell someone their podcast isn't successful because their numbers aren't like mine or their numbers don't match this or whatever it's like nah whatever you deem is successful to you is success yeah I, I, I agree I think it's definitely a perception um you know for some people it could be money like it needs to be an asset for them for some people mm-hmm. like me I'm a real estate agent so um uh, for me connections is everything I, I, I don't hunt for the sale now because I know down the line you'll either sell or you need or you know somebody. So for me, I just talk to people every day about anything. And I just let them know. <laughs> and that, so for me, like if I had a podcast, that would matter more in music relationships than actually the, you know, the money amount or the views or whatever. But I, I totally agree. Um, now for you, I've noticed you had a lot, I don't know if you knew people before, if you just know how to do it, uh, but you had a lot of interesting interviews with people from like totally different stuff. Um, and I know they're, um, I'm not too big on, like, I don't know all the artists out like that, but I do know um, there was like the Philly Goats. Like, I think there are some young guys that come up. I, I see everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. And then Wild 267 on there, you had, um, uh, I, I can't remember her name, but she was a TV, somewhat from WeTV. Um, so you, you interview a lot of great people and a lot of people from different backgrounds. What is um, your tips or how do you feel like, uh, what's a good strategy for getting good guests, whether you're on YouTube or a podcaster? How, how do you connect with these people? Um, it's like you said, connections and relationships are everything. Um, all of these people, and it kind of goes, it's kind of like a, the person the person prior becomes like the selling point to the next person. So it's like, um, basically it starts with maintaining relationships and building relationships. And it's like, Okay, how do you do that? How do you how do you meet a wallow or how do you meet a um the Philly goat or to even get to the Philly goats or whatever? It's like you have to start somewhere and I can't really say how to start. I can just what I try to do when I have my classes, I try to tell people where I started and what I started doing to kind of get out there and get myself out there and just show face whenever I could to be around these people and ultimately, you know, keep building on that and that's gonna lead somewhere. I don't know what it's gonna lead to today, but I know mm-hmm. that if I 
you know, do this and do this right and keep staying with this, then it's gonna it's gonna get me somewhere at some point eventually. Um, and even even on days when I couldn't even see it, like it's like I just I just came down here and, and for 20 minutes and all I got was a what's up from this person in a handshake and then we exchanged names who it was or whatever. And then three years later in the line, and I was like, we now we reconnect and it's like hey, he was the guy that you know said and said at the time, and now we're able to sit down and have a full interview. Uh, but all of those people were just like I said, just a matter of relationships, like. Um, a while I want to say me and Wallo, when he first came home from jail, uh, running around Philadelphia, we were running to each other all the time. Like he was trying to get his brand out there. And he, I remember I met him first time I met him was like at a roots picnic in the summertime, with like 2016 or 2017 or whatever. And he was like on backstage, excuse me. Um, and just trying to give out shirts or whatever, trying to give out shirts. And then I was backstage, um, and I just had my MacBook and I had my mic with me and I was trying to get interviews from artists as they were passing by or whatever. Um, that's kind of how we connected and we just maintained, like we always run to each other. So we kind of maintain a relationship throughout the years. Um, that's why he always goes on and he says like, as far as the podcasting land, like you was the first person I seen running around doing it. Um, because I kind of set a precedent for everybody because it was still very new. Like podcasting at that time was for people who was like in the studio, pre-recorded, and then you go home and you upload or whatever. I was doing it mobile. Like I was I was able to kind of, if, if I sat down with somebody at the time, I would be able to publish that interview right there on the spot. I could record it right then and there and then publish it literally right there on the spot. And at that time, it was still new to people. Like, oh, I ain't never seen nobody doing stuff like this. So um, just that, just impressing people in that space. And then, like I said, just maintaining relationships like that. Relationships begin one way and then it continues to build more. So we run into each other and see each other. Now we're becoming more comfortable to now to the point where, though, you know, you feel like you can say, you know, I, you know, I want to credit you with this or whatever. And then um, that knowing Wallow and, and having Wallow credit you, credit you leads to the next person. You know, OK, who's this person that Wallow is? You know, let me, let me go check him out and see who this person is. Then the next person comes along and then they kind of see it. And it's like, OK, this person is valid. And that builds and that starts a relationship with the next person who you might have thought you couldn't get. Like I tell I just I just told Gigi. Um, um, Gigi McGuire, who's on Lip Service uh, podcast, but she's also from Philadelphia. Um, that I'm like, I used to when we sat down to go do because I also uh worked with Don't Call Me White Girl on her show as a producer. We went to do lip service, and I was sitting down with Angela Yee and all of them. And I'm just like, I had the chance to tell them, like, yo, listen, man, I used to literally like y'all was one of the reasons why I started doing my podcast, like, um, well, it's the inspiration to it, like, um, like it's like a full circle moment now to the point where I'm sitting here with y'all, we just kicking it, discussing stuff like that, like. You know, and I kind of always felt like I've seen myself in those shoes in from the beginning. Like I've always looked at myself like these people are my peers, even though I'm, I might be unknown right now. But we're all in the same space. And I know I'm going to work hard enough to where I can get to that point where I can sit down and tell them this or we're working and collabing on something five, six years ago. Like I've always kind of seen it for myself. So now that's to the point to where I feel like when I accomplish certain things or reach certain levels and I don't kind of feel a certain way about it. It's like, cause I've already seen it for myself. Like I've already envisioned me getting to this point. So it doesn't feel like a, Hey man, pat yourself on the back. It's like, nah, I already knew this was going to happen. Like, um, and, that, and that's just how, like I said, just, just building relationships is just like, like it's different for everybody, but you got to make sure you maintain a relationship and go about it the right way with people. Like, cause I could, I could have, faulted so many relationships with everybody I've met over the years. Literally everybody you see I started out in this game knowing nobody. Nobody at all. Anybody you see me with Wallow, DG, the Golds, Core, uh Lil Mo. I know nobody, bro. It's just a simple fact that I know how to maneuver in certain spaces in, in certain areas. And I know how to stay on top of relationships and go about it the right way. Like and that will garner somebody some respect. Like a sense of respect. Like you don't move around like you're too pushy and really trying to get something done. You just maneuver the right way. People are going to see that already in you. Like I like how this guy moves. I like how he's shaking and moving around. I want to do something with him. Like don't force the issue. Don't press it. Let it come naturally. It might not be that in that first month you meet the person. It might not be in the first five months you meet that person. But ultimately, if you if you stick with it and stay consistent with it and maneuver the right way, it's probably going to be in that six month. Like, and that person's going to grant you whatever it is you want, and then we're willing to work with you. And that's kind of how I built relationships with people. Like, literally, everything came to fruition for me last year with I was able to land so many people down the line. Like, it was like, okay, we did a, a Miss G, let's go get Gigi. We did Gigi, let's go get Wallow. Now it's like, okay, the person after that I'm reaching out to is seeing who I've worked with prior. 
So it was like, okay, cool. I want to keep it going. Like, and then just me being from Philadelphia, it kind of, and nobody really being in this space and taking the initiative to kind of be like the, the media personality that, that has the bridge between the youth. And then like, the, I mean, I'm not that old, I'm, I'm 28, but the youth, as far as like around my brother's age, like early on, like 20, 21, all the rappers and then the people I kind of like, which is in my age bracket and, and so on, I was able, I became the bridge for that. And it was like, the youth respect me enough to come sit down with me because they look at me like, hey man, you you the top media personality or we feel like in the in the area that's covering everything. And then other people kind of see me on the up and up. It's like, we had that same respect for you. So ultimately that's kind of what it came down to. Relationships came down just, just by chance and knowing how to maneuver around in certain spaces. I think that was a, you know, I mean, like, that's how I am. Like, that's literally like in real estate. I'm not, I'm so, I, I work for Mercedes. I was top salesman for Mercedes, Subaru. Um, I've done retail. I've always been in sales and I've always been good at that. But one thing I always said was the way I've sold was be my personality. And I've never been pushy. And that, you know, and the funny thing is when you're not pushy, you kind of actually get business. So um, yeah. I never I wait for getting guests and stuff. So. Uh, but that, that's totally a good point. I mean, a lot of relationships definitely equal to if you're, you're trying to get an outcome, whether it's an interview, a sale or, you know, a plug or something like that. But if you just keep it genuine from the front, you might, like you said, you might not know what you're getting out of it, but um, something should come from that relationship. Um, one thing you talk about was Philly, um, which was actually on my notes today to talk about is, um, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware, but my family's okay. from New Jersey. And it just seems like, it's just like, like Philly's loud right now. Like it just seems like a lot of people are doing that stuff and just, you know, whether it's artists, um, I got buddies that are like getting big media deals from big companies and like there's artists coming up. I saw, I, I would butcher your name, Kerr, Kerr, um, mm-hmm. you know, you can sign with Dream Chasers. Like there's just so many people doing it right now. Um, and I just didn't know, do you think there's something going on right now? You think it's a time right now or you just think, you know, um, up right now? I feel like we've kind of always had the 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 artists in the area. Like uh, we're a city filled with like creatives and different all facets and different lanes and different fabrics. It's like we've never re- we just never really had a spotlight. Like we don't have any media companies, no big buildings, no big execs, nobody really here, no big media outlets at all to kind of shine a, a light on everybody that's doing everything. Like unless somebody catches a catches lightning in a bottle and they stay consistent and they get a hit or something bubbles locally. And it's like, you would never know what's going on down here. And I've kind of always hated that in a sense, like people, I felt like people would get big enough to the point where they can leave the city and then feel like they don't owe nothing back to the city. And it was like, I never wanted to be that person. Like I never wanted to be the guy that was like, you know, I worked this hard in the city, knowing what I went through, knowing what I had to overcome, like knowing I didn't have nobody like me coming up. It was like, why would I want to, make this uh people that's like me go through the same exact thing experience the same exact thing so even so me getting started not even really fully into like tapped in um i turned around and was like i'm gonna do a class now and to to help bring in the next group of people like i don't want to sit around and gatekeep and feel like i'm waiting around till i get to a certain level then i want to bring people in i want to bring people in while i'm in the process like so they can kind of see i'm still dealing with the same stuff that i go through on a daily basis like i just because y'all see me on here posting this, I want this person and all that. Like, no, I still will do the same stuff. Like, the same. I know what y'all been through. So I kind of want to give y'all a leg up into the situation before I get to a certain level. Like, so that way I can, you know, listen, I'm going to follow me along or whatever. If whatever you need help with, let me know. We'll get it done. And I'm, like I said, Philly Philly has always had that, but we've never really had the like, – we've never really had both sides. We never had artists and then, like, media, like, come together, like, or people covering it the right way. I feel like, even still, I kind of feel like our, I, I don't, uh, I guess we would say radio is kind of like, because we only got like radio stations like Power 99, uh, the other radio station, which changes names often, but those are like are really our own media platforms. Like, and it's like, if if you weren't rapping or everybody can't get up there or make it up there, it's like, what's the alternative? Like, how, how else are we going to get these people out here? And it was like, I got to take the initiative to be that person, like. And I didn't know I was going to be that person. I just figured I was helping people. I was helping myself and I wanted to help people. So 
like I said, I, and I owe it to the city. Like I own it to the city. Like, yeah, I've complained. It's a love hate thing with the city. Much as I complain about it, I hate the East Coast. It's, it's cold in the wintertime. I hate snow, whatever. It's like I could never turn my back on the city of Philadelphia. Like I literally owe it everything. Like everything started here. Like I got my start. I got found. And I helped build a foundation and start a foundation for people. Like I'm inspiring the next mind that's going to inspire the next mind and so on and so on. Like as long as you stay visible and, and people can see it, because that's my main thing. Like it's easy to get on the internet. And I'm in LA and I'm telling people, hey man, y'all need to go to that, uh, that uh, violence rally or whatever, or like do that or whatever. Like, wow, why, why would I go ahead and do that when people can see me at that rally and come meet me down there and see that I'm in, I'm going to be on the same team. We got the same mission, same goal. Um, and that's kind of what I always felt like I wanted to be for, for the city of Philadelphia. And uh, clearly, like, we're, we're thriving right now. Uh, still so much more to go. Even with the Philly Goats, man, I kind of felt like when I found them, they was reaching out to me on Instagram. Like, they had the, the, the number one dance on TikTok. It was going crazy. And nobody, nobody knew. Nobody wanted to credit them. Nobody knew it was them. Um Nobody was reaching out. They weren't on any blogs, no platforms. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm like, I'm going to take the initiative to get, to put them on my platform and give them that light. Like, I'm like, when we're done, I'm going to do that dance and I'm going to send it to everybody. Like, and we're going to get it, we get the ball rolling. And I got them up in the studio. We sat down, we did an interview, 15 minutes, not even that long. Just, I'm like, just enough for people to kind of see and get, and get y'all credit. So y'all can get y'all credit. Cause that's more, more, it means more to me than anything. And, they, and that ended up happening. The videos went up. The, the, the dance went crazy again. So they end up making another re, uh, uh, reiteration of the song. And now today, I just seen it. They just hit a million views on it on YouTube with the dance. And now everybody's seeing now they get the credit. And it's like, I remember at the time when I when I told my uh, somebody I was working with at the time that worked with me that I wanted to bring them up on the podcast because they were still kind of unknown. It was like, who who is these kids? Like, And it was like, they questioned it. Like, what made you want to talk to them? And I'm like, See, I don't need everybody's not gonna see what you see. Everybody's not gonna sit and 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 that's that's a key thing. It's kind of like I could have been like, you know what, you're right. I don't really know what I'm doing. But I was like, nah, like they they need the push, they need the push, they need to look. I wanna, and then they're young. You know what I'm saying that's the youth. I want to make sure that they, listen, they're doing something positive. They're not out here running around, robbing and doing all this stuff. They dancing and making music. Why would I not help push that? Like, and that and that was more sort of goal for me. Like, and now seeing them thrive and they they still hit me and, and, and say thank you and all that type of stuff. It's like that's all I wanted was to, was to see the next person, you know, just 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 thrive in whatever it is they're doing. So, if, if I can help and assist in anywhere I can, as long as in the city of Philadelphia and surrounding areas with anybody, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, man, I, I think it's good, man. I mean, whether you're from Philly or whatever, I think it's I don't think it's wrong if you um because I used to battle with that. I don't. I'm from Delaware, second smallest state, so yeah. I mean, yeah. it's I, not wrong if you, it's not wrong if you do. <laughs> It's not wrong if you leave. I just feel like it's something wrong if you feel like you're better than where you're from, if you don't try to give back to the people that help you. Not everybody make it out, especially in Philly. So, I mean, I think you should, you know, especially the people that helped you, whether it's one person or a hundred, like you you do kind of, you know, owe something to your city in some way. And I, I think that's important because I, I, I feel like a lot of people kind of, when they do make it out, just you would never know. Like you would just never know they were from Philly or you just never know they're from Delaware. So I don't think everything that you do has to be, you know, for that, you know, for your city. But I definitely think yeah. you should contribute something and make your city better and try to make the, you know, the next gen better. So um, that's been a reason why I made this blog. I mean, I just felt like I had like a lot of people reaching out about real estate. I grew up, um, a lot of people say they didn't they talk about money. I don't like, go that far. I just feel like in school, I never even knew what a real estate agent was or, a, you know, certain yeah. careers. You probably yeah. never heard podcast in school you just never never never, never. i always say the, the stuff we kind of grow fond to some, so, some of the time the stuff we never learn in school like yeah. i used to be in school and I remember i used to always ask what do you want to be you know to get asked that question early on like what do you want to be when you grow up cop a policeman fireman doctor nurse lawyer and i was like i don't want to be any of that like i don't i know i don't want to do any of that like none of that stuff interests me but it was like throughout my life i used to kind of like yo what does interest me right and i and i found there was a multitude of things like literally a lot of stuff and i'm like well, what's the career path for liking all of these things like there's no one set thing and it was like oh man you can create your own like that was the beauty of it they never told us that like you literally go through life stressing like i got to find something that fits me that suits me and what i'm going to do and the whole time it's like bro you can create your own as long as you stay dedicated to it and and ready to work behind it the same way you would if you get a job as a lawyer or a doctor and that's one of the things I like to teach people is like, yo, you can do it on your, on your own. Like, 
not to say that I'm proof of anything because I'm still in that process too. I mean, I, I, could, I could be a figure for something, but you can still do it on your own. If you like skating or you like knitting or you like painting, you can turn that do, and do whatever you want with it. Like, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I, I feel like, I think I was reading something the other day and like, it's not that entrepreneurship wasn't there before. There was just no term and nobody was talking about it. Exactly. It's like, you had to, because uh, I some people are not college and all that stuff. I don't. I just feel like you should know what you want to go. Like, I would never mm-hmm. want a surgeon to be doing surgery on me that didn't go to school. But there's other stuff that people want to do that they didn't have to go to college for. Or you can take mm-hmm. classes here and there. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of times we weren't told that, that you could make your own business or you could. And when I say make my own business, it doesn't mean I'm going to become a landscaper. Like, you could be whatever. Like you say, you can make your own business. Mm-hmm. And it a misconception which you've been pushing is, it's not going to be easy, especially if you're making something that either has not been done before or you find a hole in the gap or something that is that specific for you. Now everybody's going to jump on and you, it might take a couple of years. It might take money. It might take people telling you no. So, um, but that's, that's why for me, I grew up, I ain't never, I saw houses, but I ain't never heard real estate agent or nothing. And like you said, I, I mean, I, I've had what I guess some people consider success, but I don't think I'm at where I want to be at yet. But mm-hmm. I, I, do you know a lot of people are reaching out to me? It was just DMs, text messages, calling. How'd you get your license? And I'm thinking it's kind of easy to get in. It's just it might be hard to be successful, but it's easy to get in. And people just don't know how. And mm-hmm. it's by to introduce these different pathways. So um, I, I think what you're doing on podcast is important because, like I said, I've been people have been pushing me to do it. I just I got a lot going on right now. I just know I got to right. focus. But I think a lot of people are actually curious to do it. And they just see the big people that are doing it and they don't, nobody's telling them how, how can I do it? So exactly. I yeah. And we get it. We get a lot of people that kind of gatekeep too and want to keep stuff to themselves and keep people away. Like it was like, ah, I'm going to do this for 35 years, even though I'm way outdated and I don't really have a grasp on what's going on now. And it's like, I'm not doing that, bro. How about this? I'm going to get signed in May and by June, I'm bringing the next people in. Like that's that's what we on now. That's what we doing now. We are not holding these spots in these positions. If you aren't suitable for that position, or even if you are, bring the next person up, up, up under you. Like we don't know what can happen. Like you don't you don't might not notice the same people this next person up. Like you might not be as tapped in and, into the whatever's going on out here as the next person that you can bring in. So it's like we like it's it's all just just a crazy just a crazy concept like especially with me chasing podcasts like it's it's a space I decided to go into it's a career path on in 2015 2016 there no money was literally being made from it like so it's like how are you gonna make money from this this is one of the questions I always used to get well how are you gonna make money from this like you it's not a, it's not a it's not a real show like you just you you producing your own stuff like how, where's the money coming from and that was always a thing I'm top I'm like. See, for me, it's different. Yes, the money matters. But at the same time, it doesn't. You know, I enjoy doing this. Like, I enjoy doing it. Like, and I know if I stay consistent enough with this, that at some point in time, not saying yes, not saying tomorrow, not saying next month, but at some point in time, the money is going to come. Like, and it's going to come naturally. I'm not forcing it. Like, I'm not going to go ahead and try to push it and move around like I'm, like I'm trying to be on a money grab. It's like, nah, people are going to be able to, to, to identify if you're genuine or if it's sincere. Like, that's what people respect, authenticity more than anything. Like, I like this person because this person's real, real transparent. They be honest, not because they on here talking about, I need to get this money. We need to find out how we're going to make this, get people to pay us for this. And it's like, nah, bro, it's not going to work. If you win it for the money, it's not going to work. I'm sorry to say, like, you got to have another, you got to have a passion for it. And like, even now I see people, some people say like the podcasting business or industry is kind of oversaturated. And I always say, like, if you think it's oversaturated, that means it's working. Like, that means uh, other people have kind of seen the success from other shows and they want to come in and kind of get a taste of it. See, and quickly they get, they see how not easy this shit is. Like, not easy. Like, it's not easy at all. You might think you can sit down in front of a mic and talk by yourself for an hour. But I guarantee you when that mic cut on and them cameras cut on, you're sitting there and you're going, um, if you're not, if you're not planned, if you're not well planned for it, then I promise you, it's not as easy as it looks. Like, um, so that's one of the things, man. Like I said, we we just I'm just on a whole different different vibe right now. I feel like, um, and it's, I mean, clearly, and it's not just me. Like I, I can sit up here and speak for myself all day, but it's like 
it's people that's co-signing the stuff I'm doing and co-signing and, and crediting me with certain things. Kind of like, okay, cool. So I, not only do I believe this, but these people believe it too. And they see it in me too. So it's like, you want the right path. Like I'm on the right path. Like, and I feel like you on the right path. What you doing? I appreciate that, man. I mean, that's, I feel like, I mean, I, I'm a, honestly, I feel like for me with this, that's a lot of things. I mean, for me, 2021 was like, okay, I'm going to get in my lanes, but I'm going to teach myself everything I can. And just, you got to learn it. Like you said, make a passion. I wouldn't call it. That's what I was saying before, but you got to mm-hmm. learn to like what you do. It's not wrong with wanting to make a living, but if that's all you're, you're caring about, you're not, even if you, even if you could, you can't last that long. You're just not going to last that long. Exactly. And for me, for this, in the beginning, it was like that. Uh, when I was in real estate, it was like that. I didn't sell my first house for seven months. And mm-hmm. they told me that before I got in, but I'm, I'm like the top salesman ever. So when I got in, I thought I was going to sell one in a month. And I think um, a lot of people need that is you got to have a passion and truly love what you want to do. Uh, that's one reason why I started a blog is I kind of do this for a personal reason. I get some out of every interview. And mm-hmm. throws all my businesses every time. So as much as I'm helping other people, I'm also helping myself. And, and that, that doesn't have to be for everybody. You can find whatever you can out of your business or your passion that makes you in it other than money. But I, I agree. I think it's very important. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Because I mean, like I said, um, my thing, what I want to do for my blog, I think every blog, interview, YouTube, podcast, it ha- you have to find, even if it's the same topic, you got to find something different. That make sure it's different why people and for me was i wanted to interview every industry possible mm-hmm. i wanted to be that kind of conversation earlier about people don't know certain lanes or they don't know again so i don't care necessarily how big the person is on social media i care about have they had somewhat success have they had a lot of success doesn't matter um what they're doing is working let's give an insider to that industry so i want to interview you know artists i want to interview um, contractors. I don't care if you, you scuba dive, whatever. I want to mm-hmm. interview every industry so that the next mm-hmm. generation you can see, you know, somebody who did it that looks like you. So, um, right, right. Appreciate your, your, your kind words about it, though. No, nah, I appreciate you for having me, man. It's, it's like I said, it's dope to see. Um, I always like to remain in touch with, like I said, I, I, I never like to feel like I'm unreachable, even though. It's kind of getting a little harder these days to kind of keep keep up with, you know, everybody's reaching out. But I like to make sure I stay as in touch as 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 possible because it's like, hey, man, you never know, man. I was that person when once upon a time reaching out and trying to get people to come work with me and listen to me and look at me and all that type of stuff. So it's like I always, like I said, I always feel like, listen, bro, I owe it to myself. It's like I see this was you, Tom. This was you years ago, like doing, you know, trying to get trying to get your stuff going. It's like. You owe it. You owe it to it. So it's like I'm always gonna make sure I, I do that when I can do it. Um, and it's dope to see that you know what you're doing. Like you're tapping in with all different with different fields. Cause now you're gonna not only you're not bringing in just one demographic. You're bringing in people from this lane and this lane and this lane. And then they're all all your shows, all your interviews. They're looking at it's like okay, I can see what I can learn from carpeting, or if I can see what I can learn from podcasting, or see what I can learn from television. Like all in one space. So I want to salute you for that too, man. And I, I definitely appreciate appreciate you for reaching out and, um, and having me on. Absolutely, man. Um, again, I, I appreciate the opportunity, man. I we, we were just talking about no pressure. I know I was harassing you, so I appreciate it. No, it's good. <laughs> uh, it's good, up. bro. It's good, bro. We straight. We good. Trust me. But um, I saw, I don't know, I saw you only had 15 slots, so I was going to ask if you had any other projects you want to share. But I saw you got uh, a seminar coming up. I don't know if that's already booked up. You got something else that oh, you might. I actually I gotta check because I everything went active today. Um, if yeah, well I have my um, I do like cl- I started doing classes or whatever. I started like last summer. Um, I had my first class, um, which is like basically just me tell teaching people about my journey and giving them tips and insight on where to start, how to start as far as podcasting and just basically turn to just my my reality or like I said everything I've endured and just giving it back to them and telling them what they should do and what they don't do but it's still different for everybody um and then I ultimately had my last class uh, I want to say in November and I uh, ultimately decided to name it you can't teach podcasting um cuz I was getting a sense that it was a lot of people moving out here selling people false dreams and hopes on like that you can kind of teach this thing and it's like it's not nothing you can necessarily teach like you can you, well, you, you, you can strategize, like you can teach a strategy, but you can't teach someone how to do something. Cause like I said, everybody's different. 
somebody's not gonna come in and want to do the same thing I like. So my, everybody's interest is, is different, not the same. So I named it. You can't teach podcasting because it's like this is not a lane you can come in and just teach someone how to do math. Like two plus two equals four. It's like nah, bro. You got to do what works for you. Like at the end of the day, everything I'm telling you here is ultimately gonna bring you back to square one. What works for you? This is the strategy. This is how you can attack it. And now you go ahead. You have the tools. And you do what works for you. So yeah, my um my next seminar because a lot of people are reaching out from different states and cities. Like, hey man, I seen your classes. I've heard about them. And how do I get in contact? And I just like ah, I'm gonna have to do a virtual thing at some point. And I just decided to do it in February. I was supposed to be doing it with um my guy, but he got too busy on me. Uh, my my guy Savon Savon Slater, who used to uh be a producer on Joe Budden's podcast, who's a good friend of mine. Uh, we talk often. Um, so he was supposed to be doing it with me, but we got kind of got this, you know, he's, he's busy too, just like I am. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Um, I'm only doing, I, you typically only do limited seating. So my classes will only be like eight people. Like, so it's like, you either get in or you don't. Um, but with virtual, I feel like in a Zoom setting, I can get 15 in a room, sit down. And that way it's not too many people where I can kind of just move around and we can sit down, we can talk about everything. We can go over it, we can strategize and I can tell you all my experiences, my journey, and I can learn from every single person. Uh, and that's that's basically yeah that's it man that's February fifth. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. You can go at Tom Flies T O M F L I E S. Hit my bio the link. Um, and purchase a ticket man. Listen come 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 kick with me. I might have some people drop by. I always do in my uh classes. Uh, if anybody has been to my classes, know. Um, so you never know, man. I might have somebody pop in and and, and speak to people too. So definitely. Fair enough, man. I'm gonna have a link below, so y'all definitely gotta tap in. Um, also, speaking of tapped in, you got the series too. Um, so people can check that out too as well. I've seen a couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Conversation great. I like that they're authentic and there's real people, local people as well. Um, so definitely tap in for that too as well. Yeah, tapped uh, in with Time Flies, man. Hip Hop's 1987. I reached a partnership with them. So now all my episodes are available on Hip Hop's 1987. Uh, I'm going to be running their podcast department over there. Uh, so that means not only am I doing my show, but I'm also surveying the field for other shows and stuff too. So Listen, man, that's that's what we're doing. We're staying tapped in all 2022 and beyond. Fair enough, man. Y'all got to keep, uh, keep up with him. I'm going to have all your info below, so definitely follow him on IG. I know he's on YouTube, um, and then any other links we'll also have below. But we appreciate it, man. Um, anybody watching this, I hope you guys got some info out of this. If you think about creating a podcast, if you're in Philly or anywhere else and you're thinking about something I can do, um, this might be a lane for you. Um, but again, hit up Tom Flies. He help you, uh, you know, just steer you in the right direction. But again, it's going to be up to you to uh, make your dreams happen. So, otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in. Till next time.